Before experiencing God's unconditional love, I used to think that He is a really cruel God. Why would He use a flood to kill off the entire creation? Why would He punish Adam and Eve and the human race so severely just because they ate from the tree of knowledge of good and evil? What's the big deal? Stories like this in the Old Testament really turn people off. So was the Old Testament God really that cold-blooded? I recently learned something in Genesis that truly amazed me, and I can't wait to share it. First, let's talk about why was it so unforgivable for Adam and Eve to eat from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Our understanding and knowledge are obscured by our limitations. We only see what is visible to us. Our self-righteousness is the cause of all miseries and broken relationships. From conflicts in our family to wars between nations, every tragedy that came upon the human race was rooted in the fact that we thought we were the righteous ones. Even Hitler was able to justify his genocide. We are cursed not just because Adam and Eve did something wrong. We are sinful because of our own sins. But why does our sin deserve death? In Genesis 4, Cain murdered Abel without remorse. Sin dramatically increased in magnitude by the second generation. God would not allow sinful men to live forever. Imagine if someone like Hitler could live forever. Adam and Eve were banished from the Garden of Eden and were kept away from the Tree of Life. But in Revelation 22, one day his children will return to the Garden of Eden and receive eternal life by eating from the Tree of Life. Then no longer will there be any curse. Secondly, let's talk about why God had to send a historical flood to kill everyone except Noah's family. In Genesis 6:5, we learn that it was because the human race was so wicked, and even their thoughts were evil all the time. Before this passage, it says that the sons of God went to the daughters of humans and had children by them. Who were the sons of God? Obviously, they're not the sons of human. The sons of God were fallen angels. About one third of the angels rebelled against God and fell from heaven. They are Satan's demons. God sent the flood because the human race was so contaminated by the offspring of demons. Let's go to Genesis 5:21. When Enoch had lived 65 years old, he became the father of Methuselah, who is Noah's grandfather. The name Methuselah in Hebrew means "his death shall send." Send what? God's judgment. The flood. Indeed, when Methuselah died at the age of 969, and when Noah was 600 years old, the flood came. Do you know that Methuselah was the longest living human being? And God made him live as long as possible because he was patiently waiting for people to repent before judgment came. Genesis 5:23 to 24. Enoch lived a total of 365 years. Enoch walked faithfully with God. Then he was no more because God took him away. Enoch and Elijah were the only two people in the Bible who did not experience death, but were raptured by God. Enoch is the father of Methuselah. Obviously, he received some kind of revelation about the flood, and that's why he named his son with a prophetic meaning. Since he knew that judgment was coming, he must have conducted his life in a manner that was pleasing to God, and therefore he did not taste death. His repentance removed him from God's curse. Even though Genesis five seems to be a boring chapter of Noah's family tree, there is a profound biblical message in each person's name. In Hebrew, their names mean. Man is appointed mortal sorrow, but the blessed God shall come down, teaching that His death shall bring the despairing rest. Before the flood, God already had the plan to send Jesus to save the human race. Yes, in the Old Testament, God, He killed for reasons we couldn't comprehend, but by sending Jesus to the world, He allowed us to kill His Son, to make it even. Different from all other religions 
whose gods were high above, and their followers needed to bow down and worship. Jesus was the only one that died for his followers. What is the most valuable gift a person can give away? Their life. Sacrificing one's life to save a stranger is the holiest act of virtue, right? And that's exactly what Jesus did because he is the perfect Son of God. God is the ultimate source of goodness and love since the beginning of time.